I told him there was a conspiracy. Again and again, I was ignored. Then the Duke's death, the riots, and now this. If the Leaden Key is targeting me, we need to warn the Ambassador in first fires.
Can't get a good shot with this. Now let's cut you.
sure to be. Shot with this. Anyone suspected of treachery must be reported at once. Good, you have come. You have heard of the recent defections from our order caused by this... this apostate in Kratum. This is a dangerous woman whose lies spread like plague. She inspires chaos, sows conflict. Because of these unusual circumstances, I am speaking to all our initiates personally to ensure there is no more dissension. Who she was no longer matters. If her following continues to grow, there will be war, and all our work will be undone. You were recruited from Kratum, were you not? You must have known this heretic woman, Yavara. Hmm. I pray her old teachings were less blasphemous than the new. Was it worthwhile, this mentorship? Indeed. If she had held true to hers, we wouldn't be in this position. I am trusting you to remain loyal to the gods in this. If you do not, you will have greater powers than me to answer to. But you will answer to me as well.
Tread carefully, Estramor. Twin Elms. I've never been this far into Air Glanfarth before.
Wait. I don't know if I should go through with this. Make the trade deal with the Anamainfath. If a Valian deal with the Glanfathens weakens the Deerwood, it could mean war for the Republics in the future. I could put the idea in the Anamainfath's head that the Republics are not interested in exclusive trade, but limited trade of goods that they do not already trade with the Deerwoodlands. Another Estramor. What do you want? Few Estramoran are given the freedom of our sacred city. That you ask for this person is suspicious. There are reasons we don't let you Estramor and roam our sacred city. Reasons I am coming to understand. Looters have grown bolder at the sights of the builders. The people of Defiance Bay set fire to their own city. And every week, the three Tusk Stelgar bring news of more desperate settlers pushing at our borders, trying to escape their plague of an old fame children. Permitting more strangers the freedom of the city is out of the question right now. Go and be thankful that Anamfath Shimak doesn't sit in the passage of the Six today. He would not be so kind as I. You'd better explain yourself. There's no way you could have known this saying. Not unless you are a galoos on Anams, a watcher of souls. Feralt's warning came before the Broken Stone War. Feralt, my ancestor on my mother's side, was Anamfath of our tribe then. When the Estramoric farmers defiled the builders' monuments, Feralt urged the other Anamfatha to patience, but louder, angrier voices prevailed. Feralt believed that the invaders could be taught to respect the builders as we do. He also believed the builders' souls had spread to all peoples, and that we should avoid needless conflict with others. More practically, he worried that a violent response would only spur further bloodshed across the generations, and you can see where we are today.
While Ferelt's words were shrewd, they were ignored back then. Simply remembering his warning now will not undo the wars and the changes that the years have seen. There is blood on these stones, and that is all anyone remembers now. Another Estramor came through here a few days ago and, well, letting him through was a mistake. One I am eager not to repeat. The Guided Compass tribe has a reputation for being too soft with Estramoran. One that will not be improved by my failure to stop this man who has desecrated our most sacred sites. Don't repeat a mistake in my haste to correct it. We bar twin elms from Estramoran to protect the ancient places that the builders left behind. The builders left this heritage to us to defend, but they alone had access to it. On this much, at least the six tribes agree. These were the words given to the keepers of the stone. Very well. The city is yours to explore. Tell the guard at the gate that you come to see the cornerstone with the blessing of the guided compass. The gods have truly returned one of the builders to us. Find the Delamgon of Ter Evron in Elm's Reach. If the gods have sent you here with a purpose, the Delamgon will know. That's it. My position in the Brotherhood gone. I can't believe I just made up new trade terms to the Glanfather and Anamenfar. Postenago!
Verus. They have a saying in Biagepe. New gold clears even the oldest debts. If I'm right, all will be forgiven. If not, there's nothing I can do about it now. You have stayed true to our cause, Inquisitor, when so many others have not. For every heretic we confess, for every betrayer that burns on our pyres, new sheep continue to flock to Ivara Extensios. But not you. I underestimated you in the beginning, but no longer. It is not for honor that I summoned you today, but for duty. Too many of our own have confessed upon the wheel and the rack and the flame. 
Too many of our faithful have had their minds poisoned by the Kratom Witch. The tide is against us now. We have but one option. The Avaris following must see her exposed for what she is. She must confess her heresy before my court. Not in Kratom, surely. Their lord has embraced her heathen faith and protects her with his army. But in Osionis, things would be different. The king of Osionis is a sinful man. We have helped him to see the error of his ways, and now he fears for his soul. He would pay any price for absolution. You have already done much for the Inquisition. I wouldn't ask this, were there any other choice? Turn around, flesh creature. Outsiders are not permitted to approach the elms. Do you not feel it, sister? Something familiar. An ancient soul, like the other one. Another defiler, no doubt. Let us fell him and be troubled no more. It would pay the debt of his predecessor. So it would seem, Rhiannon, but we must not hasten to judgment. I see a different motive here, different questions in these eyes. What of it, young trespasser? Is it as my sister says, or are you here to stain this place with foul deeds? There, by his own admission, Sheetha. Really, sister? And you wonder why your leaves begin to fall out before midsummer? Clearly that man did not want to be followed. Whatever the relationship here, I suspect it is anything but cordial.
The answer is yes, old one. We crossed paths with Theos not long ago, and we can tell you where he went. But I find it curious that anyone would seek him out. Suspicious, even. If we are to help you find him, we would know why. So that is the reason he passed this way. This is low, even for the Leaden Key. I told you we should have confronted him, Sheila. He has always been a poison. It would have been the last thing we ever did, sister. Who can be said to have ever gotten the better of Theos? Yes, but imagine how much fun it would have been. Can't you just picture him all strung up in vines like an angry little puppet? But that's not what this is really about, is it? You are bound to that man. I see it now. You are awakened. Your soul is awake and something once buried deep now wells to the surface. Past overwhelms present, closes in around you. Your time has nearly reached its end. I am sorry to tell you this, but Theos cannot give you what you seek. Nor can any man. An awakening cannot be undone any more than your past can be undone. The soul is formless without a past to shape it. Did you truly expect to be able to wipe it away? That is the penance we all pay, but penance cannot be paid for a past only known in fragments and glimpses. However, as much as my sister speaks truly that there is no way back from an awakening, there may yet be a way forward. Would you agree, Shiva? I would, were the way not so likely to end in death. It may, but not all deaths are alike, and the man you pursue is versed in thousands of them. The man Theos you must already know by now. You are linked by a common past. Something about it lingers within you, festering, unresolved. What it is I cannot see any more than you. And without that knowledge, your doom is certain. But were you to learn the source of this discord, perhaps it could be put to rest. Though it is equally possible it will trouble you as much now as it did then, and merely speed your condition to its end. You might wait for it to come on its own, of course, 
But when it comes, it will replace your sanity's last breath. Such is the nature of your condition. Or you could learn it from someone who already knows. It is said the gods made his memory perfect, that he may never forget his charge. If he ever knew, he still does. Not that he would tell you, of course. You have followed the right person for the wrong reason, it seems. We see it often beneath the elms. The soul dragging mind and body to unknown places for unfathomable reasons. You may have wandered into Theos's path many times, in many lifetimes, without an awakening to show you why. The only thing that's certain is you did not find what you sought. He has gone down beneath the tower to a place older than we, where the people of Engwith once walked. He makes his way to the buried city, Sun in Shadow. May he stay down there and rot with the remains of his people. He may yet. He won't be returning the way he came, that much is certain. He opened a secret path in the tower's base, and saw it destroyed behind him through some vile means. We know of one. On the burial aisle, through the court of the penitents, Rayeth Yaman. A shortcut, in fact. Don't be cruel, sister. The way my sister speaks of is not for the faint of heart. A great pit at the center of a forgotten court, where faiths were judged in place of crimes. To most, it is simply a gateway to death. With the help of the gods, it can take you where you want to go. The pit is said to have been a means of judgment by the gods. Those cast into it are meant to die. It is that way you must pass to reach Sun and Shadow. The court is old. We do not know much for certain, but it would seem only the gods themselves can grant passage. No more than a ruin now. It is older than we, a place for the trial of heretics. We were not here to witness it. But at one time, there was a group that refused to acknowledge the gods. Neither the first nor the last, of course, but these were numerous and all put on trial for it. Those who did not repent were cast into the pit and imprisoned below. The fall killed them, of course. The prison was not for people, but for their souls. And their sentences were eternal. It is said that many of the condemned repented and were permitted by the gods to ascend from the pit, so long as they pledged their service to one of them. But these are old legends. Behind us is Ter Evron, said to pierce the Shroud itself, and a place of communion with all gods. If ever there was a time for prayer, you have found it. Not the only way. Just the only one that doesn't end with your body impaled on jagged rocks. I would pray first to those gods you like best. I hope for your sake. The feeling is shared. Ter Evron is also called the Hall of Stars, and the stars show us the allegiances of the gods. When stars are in conjunction, we know the gods they represent are aligned as well. You should choose a place to pray where you'll be closest to those you want to hear you. If a god stands alone, you should pray to that god. If they band together, you should address them all. Choose your words wisely, for all gods expect proper homage 
and none has patience for fools. Before you go, tell me this, old one. I'm curious. If you were to subdue your enemy, what would you do with him? What would give you peace? You would need to have twice as many lifetimes as he to repair his savage work. All the same, think on this matter. Be assured in your course. In the end, it may mean all the difference, not just to his soul, but to yours. And be warned. Some questions have answers that can never be learned. And it is those that trouble the soul above all others. May you find an answer to yours. Did you hear that? About our awakenings being permanent? <laughs>